dreamed about being able to hoist the Stanley Cup. I just never thought I'd have the chance to do it. This man inherited this hockey franchise desperate for a rebirth. This journey started with him. It is my honor to introduce the chairman of the Stanley Cup champion Chicago Blackhawks, Rocky Wirtz. Everybody who's successful has an obligation to leave the world better than the way he or she found it. Rocky Words told the world, and he told his team, he wanted to win. He made a commitment to you, our fans, that we would win the Stanley Cup. And guess what? We did. Chicago. You listen to the fans here at the United Center chanting Rocky Works. He's a humble man, but a good man. Championships belong in Chicago. So, to the Blackhawks, thank you for bringing it back home. To the best city in the world, to the greatest fans in the world, and the greatest team in the world. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you all for joining us as we celebrate the life and honor the legacy of our late chairman, W. Rockwell Wirtz, known to us all as Rocky. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome former Blackhawks goaltender and current broadcaster, Darren Pang. Thank you. Welcome everyone, the celebration of great man Rocky. We'll start off by saying obviously our condolences to the entire Wirtz family, friends, the many fans of the Hawks, and of course, Marilyn and Rockies. Hard to believe I'm standing up here after being gone so long. Thank you, Danny. Appreciate it. Great seeing you again. You're a young man, no beard. 12 years old, trying to be a goaltender. Hard time believing that you're emulating a 27 career game winner <laughs> that had zero shutouts. <laughs> Yesterday's service at the Presbyterian Church was really unreal, and I'm sure that if it were a bigger rock, he would have wanted everybody there. It was a passionate, sold out venue with a lot of stories and a lot of laughs. But to hear from Rockies and Maryland's good friends, I'm going to mention them because they were phenomenal. And if uh, Jamie Faulkner and Trevor Bray are looking for broadcasters, I saw them yesterday at the church service. Charles Marinoff, Mr. Jerry Reinsdorf, John Miller, Jeff Bender, Guy Ciparoni, and then later to hear from Danny, who stood at center right in the middle, hands over his powerful wingers, patrolling the boards, Hillary, Kendall, and Elizabeth at his side. Stoic, powerful, and confident. Jeez, Danny, when, you, when your dad called me, I think it was 89 or 90, said he's got some ice on the North Shore. My son Danny wants to be a goaltender. Can you go out there and give him some lessons? We did that. We did drills, we did shuffle drills, side to side. I knew I saw something special with you back then, but the calmness and poise Danny, that you showed yesterday and the days following your father's death was something else. You and your entire family should be very proud. The Blackhawks are in great hands with you at the helm. I know that. I used to throw up before games playing at the old Chicago Stadium because of nerves. I don't do that anymore, thank goodness. <laughs> Rocky Wirtz was a caring, affable, personable man. 
Funny for a guy that always had that perfect knot, didn't he? How did he get that perfect all the time? Was that a clip-on? Unbelievable. He had that great hair, awesome smile, an incredible tan, always. But somehow he wasn't a person you were intimidated by. And usually that's not the case with most successful, powerful people, men or women. I can't tell you how many times that I personally stopped by the locker room restaurant or up in the Sonia Henning room and asked security, is Rocky here? They'd always say, I'll go get him, I'll let him know you're here. And I'd walk over and give him a big hug, always. In the middle of his dinner, interrupt it, he was always so kind and gracious. I always felt like I was back home, part of the family. He always had that big smile, made me feel like a million bucks, but I do remember the time, and it was mentioned yesterday, that I went into the restaurant down below, Danny, and you had purple hair or something. And, and I remember thinking, I hadn't seen you in a while, and I looked at your dad, he looked at me, and he said, Danny's doing great. <laughs> Boy, he loved his kids, all of you, obviously, and the grandkids and the dogs. Last time I saw Rocky was three weeks ago, right here in this building, in his office. I actually had to look to see if he's in his office. I was coming here to meet up with Trevor Bray and, and Jamie Faulkner and kind of go through everything in my return. And it was really luck and very fortunate, and I feel very, very fortunate that I did get to see Rocky for the last time. I hugged him again. I think I caught him by surprise. I'm not sure he was expecting a big hug, but he got it from the little fella. I thanked him for the opportunity to return. After all, when Rocky and Danny make phone calls to return you to the city, to the team you started, and your broadcasting career you started with, you know it's the right move. And I'm beyond grateful to Rocky, Danny, Jamie, and the entire organization for their confidence in me to return. Didn't think I'd be in front of the microphone, though, for this. But I'm proud to be here. We use the term great in my line of work now as a broadcaster, probably in life, maybe too often. How do you really describe great when maybe a play is just average or it's okay? What adjective do you use when it is great? How do you describe a man that is rocky? He was adored, revered, approachable, caring. Just ask former Hawks and former teammates of mine, players that played here and bled for the Chicago Blackhawks, Edzo and Muzz, Eddie Olchek and Troy Murray. Yeah, they played here and they had injuries, but this was different, they had cancer. They woke up one morning, they had cancer. It was more than hockey, it was more than being an employee, it was more than being a broadcaster. What did Rocky say? Whatever you need. <clears throat> Whatever you need. When COVID hit, and games were canceled and workers didn't have games, that meant no income. What did Rocky and Mr. Reinsdorf do? They paid their people. They made sure. Rocky Wirtz had a saying that may very well go on his tombstone <laughs> forever. He said that, not me. <laughs> there was an article I read when he said, and it's been talked about, figure it out. He always thought ahead, not behind. And that's what he did in 2007 when he took over for his dad a man I greatly respected and looked up to in Bill. From afar, I was so excited to see the future Hawk stars that were going to be on home TV. I played in an era with only 21 teams at the Chicago Stadium, and they didn't get to see Tony and Maggie and Cliff Coral and Stan, Doug Wilson and Denny Savard and the Spinoramas, but they were now. Rocky was doing something that hadn't been done here, and he was growing our great game of hockey. And boy, did he ever. This rekindled the Hawks' passion, and Rocky connected with the fans. It was the greatest sports business turnaround ever, according to Forbes, and he signed Marion Hossa shortly after that, speaking of looking ahead, to a 12-year deal, and we are delighted to have Marion Hossa, the Hockey Hall of Famer, here today. A 12-year deal, and then the Wirtz family won under Coach Q, their first cup since 1961. But then two more after that to become regarded as one of the greatest teams in any era. And you know what was great yesterday for me, just coming back to the city. I know the players and I know the managers and I know a lot, obviously the alumni and a lot of people here. But what I took from yesterday was seeing Coach Q and his former players, champions. You could just see it. 
It's powerful. Rocky would have loved that. Rocky would have loved that. He would have loved seeing the former and current players in the same room. To see us smiling, but we could see the pain. What was next? These players have forged an unbelievable bond with Rocky and the Wirtz family. So you could see it on Jonathan Taves and Duncan Keith and Brent Seabrook and Patrick Kane's face, not to mention Marion Hosen, and Corey Crawford, the great goaltender. It should be mentioned that the young phenom, unbelievable that Rocky won't get to see him play, Connor Bedard was also in attendance, paying his respects as a young man. What great respect he showed yesterday. Along with Coach Luke Richardson and his staff and Kyle from Chicago, Davidson, one of the few guys in this building that's shorter than I am. Sorry, Kyle. To Danny and Ann, Hillary and Aaron, Kendall and Brendan, Elizabeth and Joe, plus your six incredible grand children of Rockies. I'd say we're all blessed to have been touched in one or another by Rocky. <clears throat> I know I have been. I feel blessed. <clears throat> Thank you, Rocky. One second. <clears throat> oh. Thank you. It now gives me great honor to have one of the very best voices that have ever called the game of hockey. Made some of my average glove saves seem remarkable with that great voice of his. His ability to call the play created incredible anticipation and excitement was like very few. He's a, Holly, he's a Hockey Hall of Fame broadcaster. I love that Rocky knew that and brought him back to the Hawks where he rightfully belonged. Please welcome Pat Foley. Back to Chicago, Darren Pang, or as we like to call him, Spank. Might as well get that started right today. Um, it's a tremendous thrill and honor for me to be able to uh, speak for a couple minutes about this, this great, great man. Yes, as Darren mentioned, uh, he brought me back to the Chicago Blackhawks, uh, but I want to tell you a quick story about the way Rocky always seemed to be, and any, any of you who have interacted with him would know this is true. A couple months after I come back, we're at some charity event, and uh, I'm walking along, and Rocky and I cross paths. And we say hello, shake hands, and he says right away, he says, I'm really looking forward to watching TV now and watching you do the Hogs games. You are right where you belong. How cool is that? I mean, so we shake hands and walk away. There's a 15-second transaction that sticks with me almost two decades later. You know, when the boss drops that one on you, it's pretty cool, you know? So um, that was one of the gifts that Rocky had. He was an uplifting, giving man. And he had, always had a way to make people feel important and feel special. Didn't matter whether you were the plumber or the bus driver or a CEO, he had a gift for conversing and even in a short interaction, making people feel better than they did before they said hello to him. He, he had a tremendous gift for that. I have a question for you today. Is Rocky Wirtz the most popular owner in the history of Chicago sports? Now, Darren mentioned this, I, I say that in the context that it doesn't matter what city you're talking about, what franchise you're talking about, the owners are generally not the most popular people in town. Why? Well, because all of us fans know how they should, should be spending their money better than they do, right? Hire this guy, fire that guy, trade for that guy, let's hire, let's get this free agent. So the owners have to live with all that, and very rarely are they popular. But at the beginning of this uh, broadcast today, you heard what happened here at the United Center very shortly after he took over, the fans chanting his name. And when he did take over, Blackhawks were in a bad way. 
You know, in sports, it's no good when people are mad at you. There's something worse than that, is when they don't care about you. And when Rocky took over, the Blackhawks were irrelevant in the city of Chicago. There were no TV ratings. There was nobody in the building. You're going to hear from Brent Seabrook later. He played in this building with four or 5,000 people in the stands. I'd be sitting way up there at the roof calling the game, and you could hear the puck hit the stick on a pass. It was embarrassing. But that's the situation Rocky walked into. Not long before he took over, the Blackhawks were named the worst franchise, not in hockey, in all of sports. That's what he took over. But immediately, he started doing the right things the right way. The first call he made when he got control of the franchise was to a fellow named Jim Corno, who ran the TV station, uh, Comcast or Sports Vision or whatever we were back then. But he said, how many of my home games can you put on TV? Now look at that, as many of you remember, was the biggest thorn in Blackhawks fans' side. You couldn't watch the home games on television. Rocky changed it right away when he took over doing things for the fans, making them feel welcome. He reunited with Blackhawks alumni players. Now, unfortunately, before he took over, when you untied your skates for the last time as a Chicago Blackhawk, good luck to you. I mean, the legendary Stan Makita told me a story back in the day. He wanted to bring some friends to a game, and they gave him some tickets, and they charged him for them. So Rocky wanted to make former players know that they were welcome, they were wanted around here, and rekindling the relationship with the alumni was just a spectacular thing that, uh, that he pulled off. And again, it was the right thing to do. One more question today. Is Rocky Wirtz the most important Chicago Blackhawk ever? Look, there have been a lot of great coaches come through here, a lot of general managers, a bunch of spectacular hockey players, everything from Hall of Famers to people who have their numbers hanging from the rafters, to role players. You know, every good team, you have to have a role and be willing to accept and execute. So all those guys meant something to Rocky Wirtz. And he did not revitalize this franchise. I don't think that does him justice. I believe he saved it. And again, the Blackhawks, when he took over, were irrelevant in this time. Uh, and Rocky made you feel welcome. I'm sure many of you had this interaction. We all knew where he sat. He'd be right up there in the corner. Among the fans, his security guy, Kenny, would be hanging around, but he was never needed because religiously people are coming up to Rocky will you sign my hat can I take a picture with you he was always welcoming always affable he was a fun fun loving guy uh, he was very much a giver so I'm not going to take a lot of your time I just uh, appreciate the opportunity to say a couple of words about a great man rest in peace to the most important Chicago Blackhawk ever, William Rockwell Wirtz. Please give a warm welcome to former Blackhawks defenseman, Hockey Hall of Famer, and Blackhawks ambassador, Chicago's own Chris Chelios. Thank you. Uh, can be honest, up all night. Uh, some smiles, some kind of disappointment. You're never ready for something like this. It happens so sudden. Um, really going to miss Rocky. Uh, it's really one of the toughest things I've ever had to do in my life, honoring and to bid our final farewell to a man who truly embodied the virtues of humility and inspiration, and that was Rocky. As we celebrated his life, let us remember the amazing journey, leaving behind an undeniable legacy of love not just as a devoted husband to Marilyn, a loving father to Danny, Lizzie, Hillary, and Kendall, but also to the city of Chicago, who loved him like no other. Rocky's passion for life was second to none, whether it was stories about family, friends, business, hockey, or those crazy dogs he always talked about, 
He would light up the room, always smiling, always laughing. He was kind to everyone, treated everyone the same. Whether you worked for him, were a player, business associate, he loved talking to everyone. He was an inspirational presence. Some of my best memories with Rocky were at our staff and Christmas parties. The players, the kids running around, Marilyn and Rocky were the first ones there and the last ones to leave. And I'll tell you later why I understood, you know, where Rocky had got this and, 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 and how much fun it was just to be involved with, with the staff and the players and their families at Christmas at such a special time. And then he was always caring, always engaging, uh, making you feel like he really cared, and he really, truly did. If it wasn't for Rocky, I wouldn't be standing here today. He brought me back to be part of this Blackhawk family, and again, and I thank him and his family for that. The way he treated my parents over the years was unbelievable. Rolling out the red carpet for them every time they came to a game or a Blackhawk event. And when, sorry about that, my sister Gigi was battling cancer between his father Bill and Rocky, got him the best doctors and medical attention you could get. When my daughter Kaylee was getting ready to go to college, it was Rocky who met with her and inspired her to live her dream. And because And because of Rocky, she's now doing that. Sorry, I talk about my kids and friends, I get a little bit. Dan, you pulled it off yesterday, so I'm gonna try my best today. I can't imagine how hard that was for you, but like I said, and now Kaylee is also part of that family, living her dream. And I couldn't be prouder for her. And again, thank you to Rocky and what the Words family has done. They've meant everything to me. I'm sure there's countless in numbers of people that can share their stories where Rocky or the Wirtz family has had that impact on them also to help them through their lives. No one has ever accomplished and gave more than Rocky did. So now this is a tough part. I'm just gonna wing it here. Uh, I grew up in Chicago. Uh, Blackhawks have been a part of my life, I'll say 1967, 68. As a fan, then as a player, and now as an ambassador. Um, I never really interacted with Rocky very much when I was playing. He was doing the, the liquor business, and occasionally I'd run into Rocky in the Sonia hanging room. That's where they held court, and that's where business was done till late night hours for sure. And that, that was his father and him. But I, I did get to know Mr. Bill Wirtz very well. Um, he's tough. Uh, anytime I got in trouble, I'd be in that office. And even when I thought I was right, I'd leave that office thinking he was right. And it, it didn't matter because he, Whatever he said was the word, and that was, it was unbelievable. But when I did finally come back to Chicago as an ambassador, it was easy for me to, to get along with Rocky because I knew where it had come from and I knew what type of person he was. And the most important thing that his father and Rocky, it was so easy to tell, family first and foremost, then his friends and then the Hawks, and then everyone underneath that with the businesses and his staff. And it, it, that's all that mattered. And I, I thought about something that Danny had said yesterday and just figure it out. And that's the one thing that made me smile. And I'm just guessing in that room when Danny's there, or staff or family members that are working for the beverage company or, or for the team, there's different decibels of just figure it out. That piercing look that he has with his eyes that could cut right through you, it didn't matter, but afterwards, when you walked out of that room, you were feeling good because he was the most honest person I've ever met. And because I mean, what he accomplished as an owner and, and with the Chicago Blackhawks, that put him on the map. And he didn't want the credit. He, he just he loved being there as a fan, but he did embrace it like no other owner I've ever seen in my life. And as Pat said, there's no other owner in sports history that was well-loved like him. I mean, the chanting his name, it's, it's unreal. And to me, like I said, I, I've never met very many people in my life that had an impact on my life, and I can't thank him and the family enough. So in the future, in the liquor business, Danny, and with the Blackhawks, I have every, all the confidence in the world that you, your family, you will figure it out, and the next era is going to be amazing. Good luck to all of you. Rocky will miss you. Thank you. Well done, Chelly.
always a man that speaks right from his heart. We now welcome a man who has worked in the Chicago news media for over 25 years. He covered three Stanley Cup championships with CBS2, Chicago, and in doing so, really got to know the Wirtz family well. He credits that successful Blackhawks run with his son, Jaden, who is here in attendance. He's also a player with the USHL Green Bay squad, so way to go there, Jaden. Um, one of the reasons why you fell in love with the club was these Chicago Blackhawks. Many people today have similar stories about how the success of those teams led by Rocky Wirtz helped them fall in love with hockey and the Hawks. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome former television news anchor, current media consultant, and lifelong Blackhawks fan, Rob Johnson. It's so hard to be here today when you know all the memories we've had all of these years, all the championships, all the great moments, public, the ones that weren't public, but we all have them seared in our memories. And yet here we are, honoring a man who was like none other. And everybody's already expressed that in a perfect way. When Danny asked me to do this last week, I was humbled and I was honored. And I was also happy because for all the Wurtzes have done for my family and me, for all the experiences they've allowed us to have, it was a chance for me to do something for you all. What a great opportunity that is. And that's the second time since I've known them I was able to do that. I'll tell you about the first time in a couple of minutes. But as I was sitting with my wife Stacy and we were recalling all the great memories we have of Rocky, she said to me, what he gave us was the gift of time. Think about that. Think about a man with unlimited means who could do anything, go anywhere, and yet it was the gift of time. Let's think about any of you sitting here today. What are your memories with Rocky? Was it something he got you? Was it some, or was it an experience? Was it something you were able to to have that was you'll never forget in your life. And that's, that's where Rocky came in. Uh, as Darren mentioned, uh, I'm, I'm part of a hockey family. I took the game up as an adult, so I was never any good. But my son, Jaden, as he referenced, uh, he started playing at four. He's reporting to his uh, junior team here at the end of August. He's 18 now. And we We've been season ticket holders for years. So we've been part of this ride. It's been incredible. And I didn't cover the Blackhawks. I wasn't a sports person. I was a news person. So that wasn't my beat. But whenever, this, whenever the moment got big enough, whenever they were on a Stanley Cup run, they would include the news people. And that's where I would get to come in. And it was such a great honor to get to do that and to have really a front row seat to what was going on here in the United Center and elsewhere. But we were talking about people cheering Rocky's name. And I remember, and I would ask a couple times a year, maybe when they were in the Stanley Cup hunt, and his ace PR guy, Guy Ciparoni, Chip, would organize an interview. And I remember, I think it was 09, as they were trying to ascend to the highest levels in the hockey world. And I said, I just want to walk around the corridor with you and interview and ask what it's like. Pat's, Pat touched upon the way it used to be versus the way it became under Rocky. And that, that moment, that story, it was like Elvis was in the building. He couldn't go anywhere. Everybody was mobbing him. They were the adulation that they had for him. He brought this franchise back. He returned them to the perch they deserve to be on, they should be on. And everybody just wanted to come up and touch him, take a picture, say thank you. The fan base, all of you who were long suffering and all of a sudden you could see it. And then it happened again and again. But to know the public persona and to know the man who is truly so giving, to have those moments, that gift of time was so special. Um, a story was recounted to me. Rocky was in a meeting here at the United Center. Jaden was playing mite hockey. He's seven, eight years old. Rocky gets up, walks out of the meeting, and says, I got to go watch Johnson's kid play. Like, he, 
the, his little mic team was playing here at the United Center and when they, the, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon, they always had the youth teams come in and play. And he went and watched them play. I mean, that's Rocky. And it, it, just so many terrific memories that, that, but what happened in 119 with all of you, it's already been talked about a little bit, people coming up, wanting a picture, wanting to say thanks. And he sat with the fans and he, had such an indelible impact on all of us. It really was special. And as you've heard referenced on a couple of occasions, the Sonia Henny Room. It was incredible to be allowed to be in there with all of the Wurtzes, with all of his, his true inner circle of friends, the vendors, the Millers, the Chipperonis, the Lymans, and the list goes on and on. I don't have time, I can't possibly name them all, but many of them are sitting right here. And to get to strike up a conversation with somebody, you never knew who was gonna be in there. There'd be people from the world of politics, or business, or media, but you always knew you were gonna to talk to somebody really interesting. And that was, to me, that gift of time was incredible. And to be able to spend those moments, with not just those amazing people, all of you right here, but also the staff, everybody, first class, unbelievable. But I do have to tell you, it wasn't always perfect back there. There was a time in 2010 after the Blackhawks ascended that mountain, won the first Stanley Cup, and they had to, you know, they couldn't keep everybody. They're a championship team. So Jaden, who was a fan, he was a fan of all these guys, but he really liked Thomas, Thomas Kopetsky. And he goes up to Rocky in the lounge and he's like, why did you get rid of Kopetsky? This is five-year-old Jaden. And Rocky starts explaining to him, you know, the you know, hockey 101 for the hard salary cap. I'm not sure Jaden understood it at all, but it was, one, it, was one, it was a very funny moment. And then I remember a moment, um, just dozens and dozens of times, we just got to talk to wonderful, interesting people. And then a few years later, Jaden's quite a bit older, maybe it's three, four years ago, and he's with one of his hockey teammates in the lounge in the Sonia Henny room. And the great one's there, Wayne Gretzky. And so is Chris Chelios. So my son and his teammate got a picture with Wayne Gretzky and Chris Chelios in the same picture. Can you imagine that? What a, what a great family memory that is for us. And it was just to see it through the eyes of a young person. We were talking about growing the game and having young people who are my son's age now. You know, they really started to love the game, and that's why hockey got so popular here in Chicago. That's why it's the game it is today. That's why there's so many high-level players that are that around that age, because it was cool to play again. People wanted to get on the ice. That was because of Rocky Wirtz. And I remember one more occasion in there. It must have been, Jane must have been maybe nine, and he's sitting there talking to Rocky and Marilyn and the Mesero executive chairman, Richard Price, and his wife, Linda. We're all sitting in there talking, and nine-year-old Jaden says, hey, will you all come watch me play in Winnetica? Which he used to call it that when he was younger. He knows the, the, the right pronunciation now. And they were like, sure. I mean, like, you ask Rocky Wirtz, Richard Price, to come watch your hockey game when you're like nine years old? And they're like, sure, we'll come. And you're like, oh, no, they, they may or may not come. But about a week and a half later, on a snowy, cold November morning, in walks Rocky, Marilyn, Richard, and Linda. And they walked in and the oxygen just went out of the room. People couldn't believe that Rocky had come to this game. They couldn't figure, what's he doing? What's going on? And everybody's staring, their eyes are huge. And after the game, the coach said, hey, would Rocky like to go in and say a few words to the kids? And Rocky's like, you know, that's not really my style. You know Rocky, you know, he so humble, so kind, but he wasn't gonna go in and give nine-year-olds a rah-rah speech. But he did say, I'll, I'd be happy to take pictures with people. So Rocky sat there after the game for maybe an hour 
and took pictures with every person that walked up, including the other team. And I think we have a picture that I want to show you right there. There it is. The Prices, the Johnsons, the Wurtzes. And at the end, I said, Rocky, thank you so much for doing that. You have no idea that, what a great honor that was for all of us, but especially for Jaden and his teammates. And he said, no, Rob, thank you. I used to come to this rink every week to watch Danny play for years, and it brought back so many great memories. And so that's the first time I ever felt like I gave something to Rocky Words. What could you give Rocky Words? That was it, and it was so gratifying. And our gift of time with him is over. It's sad, it's hard to process, but hearing all these kind words is what really matters. And so I just say, I'm grateful for the memories. I'm grateful for every moment here with Rocky and the Wurtzes, and to have that special moment with everybody so rest in peace, Rocky. God bless the entire Wurtz family. And go Blackhawks. They'll be back on that perch before you know it. Thank you. Joining us now are some of the core players from the great Stanley Cup winning Blackhawks teams that made Rocky and Blackhawks fans everywhere proud. Please welcome Marion Hosa. On behalf of my teammates and all current and former Blackhawks players, I would like to extend my condolences to the Wirtz family. Marilyn, Danny, Hillary, Kendall, Elizabeth. Rocky means a lot to all of us players. He will never forget what he, we will never forget what he has done for us. It's my privilege today to share with you a few words about Rocky. Rocky did so much to pave the way to our success on the ice as a players. But today I like to remember him by focusing on a few of those lessons he taught me for life after hockey. I was uh, in my fifth season with the Blackhawks in 2014. We had won already two Stanley Cups and were hungry to win a more. Rocky invited few players to break through beverage warehouse just outside of the city. It was amazing. The setup was modern. It was fascinating for me to see all the moving parts of the operation and the great size of the building. Rocky's vision and pride in this project was really inspiring. It opened my eyes to the possibilities for my own food supply business. And in a month, my company is moving into our new warehouse. Thank you to the inspiration I received from Rocky. I know many of Rocky employees are here today who work at the same warehouse we visited 10 years ago. I know Rocky appreciates you all and is really proud of you. I also learned throughout the years that Rocky was a man of his word, that something is very important in all parts of life. When I stopped playing due to my skin condition a few years ago, Rocky took me out for dinner. We talked about the possibility of trading my contract. I wasn't too excited for that idea because it was really important for me to retire as a Chicago Blackhawk. Rocky didn't put any pressure on me to decide one way or the other, but explained to me that I would always be a Blackhawk. Few in his position would take the time to explain it. I asked him if he traded my contract 
I would love to return and officially retire as a Black Hawk. So we shook hands and he made a promise to me. I called it gentleman's agreement. He treated me with respect by taking the time to share with me the value of our relationship for the long term. After a few years, when it was time for me to officially retire, Rocky delivered his promise. Rocky, Danny, Jamie, called me and invited me to return to Chicago to sign one day contract and retire with the Blackhawks. I was thrilled. That meant a lot to me, not just being able to retire with this organization, but the fact that Rocky made that promise to me and he kept that promise. That is something I will never forget. In my own businesses at home, I have continued to use the important rest lesson Rocky taught me. Have a vision, stay true to your word, and treat people with respect. These lessons came naturally to him. I want him and his family to know I will do the best to pass this Lessons on the continued Rocky's legacy. Thank you to the Words family for letting me speak today. I will always carry the spirit of Rocky with me. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Brett Seabrook. <laughs> wow, I've never been this nervous to be inside the United Center on this, this ice sheet, so bear with me. Um, it's an honor to, to be on this stage and share some brief, brief words about Rocky. Before I get started, I'd like to share condolences to the Wirtz family, Rocky's many friends here today, and countless others whose lives he's touched. One of the first times I met Rocky, I remember seeing him at the rink and saying, hello, Mr. Wirtz. He replied, just call me Rocky. Uh, I remember calling him Mr. Wirtz a few times after that, and finally, maybe after three or four times of calling him Mr. Wirtz, he finally stopped and said, Brent, it's Rocky. I think there are several people here today that can tell that same story. Rocky made us players feel like we were in this together. It was never him being an owner and us being players. We were all pulling on the same rope together. That type of relationship in this world is rare. But as a player, I always appreciated that. He wasn't controlling or around too much, but we always felt his presence. It was a privilege to be a Black Hawk, and that started with Rocky. I'm very lucky to have played my entire career for the Wirtz family. When I decided my days as a player were ending, I wanted Rocky to hear it from me directly. He was so good to me and my family, I wanted to formally thank him. I drove out to his house and met with Rocky and Danny, but it was hard to thank him. I tried a few times. It was hard to say thank you because we just talked the whole time. He told stories, I told stories, Danny told stories. It was 15 years, 15 years of stories. We laughed, it was a blast, but we just kept going and going and going. One story after another. I spent about two hours at his place and I'm pretty sure I got to thank him as I walked out the door to leave. But that was him. He made everybody comfortable, welcome and included. He was approachable, easy to talk to, and treated everyone the same, with respect. Rocky didn't just treat his players and, sorry. Rocky didn't just treat his players and staff like family. He treated our own families like family. It reminds me of a story from when we won the Stanley Cup in 2010. Following the parade, we had a party for staff, and players and our families. Rocky and Marilyn were there and I wanted to take my family over to thank them. We walked over to say hello and my mom said to them, this is the best birthday I've ever had. Rocky said to my mom, oh, what's your birthday? 10 minutes later, I turned around and there was a birthday cake from Rocky and everyone was singing happy birthday to my mom. On a day where Rocky should have been celebrating his accomplishments as the leader of the team, he instead put the spotlight on my mom. He brought my family into this wonderful family we're all here to honor today, 
My mom talked about that birthday all the time. I close by telling you, Rocky, I always loved being a Blackhawk. It was a privilege to play for you. Thank you for everything, and we're going to miss you. Incredibly well done by all you former players, and you can see why this franchise, under the guidance of Rocky, won the three Stanley Cups. Fun to watch, isn't it? It's like last night at the bar, fun to watch, to see uh, Arthur and Michael and tell some stories of, of the old days. These guys have a bundle of them. What a great moment that must have been for Siebs just to, to be with you hang out, maybe have a couple of pops, talk about 15 unbelievable years. It's been my pleasure being here today and celebrating Rocky. And as we look around in closing, I think we should all just think of when we last saw Rocky, you know, whether it was as a fan sitting up there in the seats that he was always in. Look around at the United Center and how beautiful this is. And I actually have to close this with a little bit of a laugh because Danny certainly has a lot of Rocky in him. Danny was walking down with his beautiful daughter and looking around for the first time. And I just happened to be down there at the bottom of the stairs and mentioned something about the great work that everybody did and said we should maybe get in this business. Weddings, services, <laughs> the flowers, so beautiful, <laughs> well said like when you laughed. Danny, your, your dad made this place feel like the old Chicago Stadium. There wasn't 24 steps going up. I'm sure that if they could have, they would have had that done. Those 24 steps that were narrow, linoleum, hopefully we didn't have too many the night before to get up those steps and then get down those steps because it was some kind of experience. And I've been in this building when it didn't have life, and I've been in this building when Rocky's taken over and it's had so much life and so much personality. And yeah, Bill and Mr. Reinsdorf started this just prior to that lockout of 1994-95. But Rocky made it. He built it. His vision, his personality has made this United Center really feel like the old Chicago Stadium. So as we leave today, let's remember to listen to the sounds of the fans yelling Rocky. Thank, Thank you. you. Rest in peace, Rocky. <clears throat> For the visitation portion, every member that's on the floor can pay their final respects, and then we will proceed to the stands after that. God bless everyone. Have a great day. Love you.